guys, uh, my name is Waleed and uh, we'll be covering flip-flops today. Uh, we're looking at the basic flip-flops, uh, but before we begin, let's uh, draw a basic circuit diagram for that. And then we can look further into it. I'm drawing this diagram using NAND gates only. Okay. The reason I draw a diagram, let's use this diagram as a base diagram for all the, we will be covering four types of flip-flops and we're going to use this as a base diagram for any flip-flop that we're covering. Okay. So I want to focus on this part before we go anywhere else. Okay. This part is called latch. So all the flip-flops have latch in there. What this part does is it stores one bit of data. Okay. So one bit of value. So at this part, from here, here, that's a latch, okay? It's storing a value of one bit, and rest of the circuit allows it to change it for the next state, or, uh, you know, keep the same value, What or however, you, you can design it the various ways, okay? So, we can, we'll come back to this. Let's look at the four type of flip-flops that we'll be covering. We'll be covering D flip-flop, we'll be covering T flip-flop, We'll be covering SR flip flop, which is this one, and we'll be covering JK flip flop. Okay? Alright, so let's look at the D flip flop. Okay? What is D flip flop? And that's on the clock. So, clock allows us to control a flip flop and the other. Uh, and we change, this is our next state, so we change our next state depending on whatever you put in, in, okay? So, let's look at it. So, D flip flop, as you can see, it's one bit. It's gonna look like this. So you got D, one input, you got claw controlling it, and you got some next state coming up, okay? Okay? So, when the clock is off, we don't care about what we're putting in because it's off, and the latch is gonna hold whatever it had before, the previous, state or previous value, okay? This is the next state, t plus one, ut, you can say it's the previous state. When the clock is on, we have two possibilities since it's one bit, okay? Either the value is gonna be zero or it's gonna be one, okay? So, D flip-flop, it allows us to change the next state to whatever we're putting in. So if we're putting it zero in as D, our next state will become B, become zero. If we're putting it one, it's gonna be one, okay? So, that's D flip-flop, and T flip-flop is exactly the same. The only difference between T flip-flop is that it toggles, okay? T stands for toggling. What does that mean? It means that similar to this, when the clock is off, we don't care, it's gonna hold a previous state. But when the clock is on, we have two possibilities, zero or one. Okay, it toggles, it gives you the opposite of what it was holding before. Okay, so these two are very special and the easiest flip flop that we're going to deal with. Okay, but the, the other one, let's look at SR flip flop and then we're going to relate it with what we have. So, what's SR flip flop? So, I'm going to just say, is this? And have SR. You can see that SR, which stands for set and reset. So I'm just going to write it down here, set or reset. And next to it, the clock. And that's two bits, right? Two bits means, two, two bit input means we're going to have four possibilities. So the clock is off, we don't care, it's off, it's going to hold its previous state in the latch, again. When the clock is on, there are four possibilities. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, okay? So I want, so when it's zero, zero, it's similar to having the clock off, the flip-flop is off, so it's gonna hold its previous value, which is Q, T. When it's on, and when set value is zero, but reset value is opposite, it's gonna give you zero for the next state, and when set value is one, and reset value is opposite zero, it gives you one. But when both are one, one, we don't use that. So we say it's not used. 
Okay. So that's good. I want you to notice something. I want you to notice this particular portion over here. Okay. So when it's zero, we get zero. When side is zero, we get zero. When side is one, we get one. Given that our reset value is opposite to that, which is awfully similar to our D flip flop down here. When our D value is one, well, when D value is zero, we get zero. When it's one, we get one. Okay. So using this diagram, base diagram, circuit diagram, using NAND gates of SR flip flop, we can drive D flip flop from here. Similar to how it says. When it's zero, you get zero, 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 given that reset value is one. So all we need to do is we need to put D in here and give reset the opposite value, just like the table explains. Okay? This is now D flip flop, have a latch, and you know, have the same property as this. You probably noticed this the thing with these two flip flop is given the clock is on. It doesn't care about uh, previous state. It doesn't care about previous state. state. In this case, Q, T. You can see over here, right? When the clock is on, you have two possibilities, 0, 1, and next state is de determined on whatever you're inputting. It doesn't care about the previous state. However, SR, it does. When it's 0, 0, it's holding the previous state, so it does. And same goes for JK. And what's the difference between JK and SR? It's very, very simple. So let's draw it over here. When you have JK flip flop, again clock, JK, you got two bit input, and you have a next state. Clock is off, you don't care about this, and holds the previous state, just like SR. Clock is on, zero, zero, it holds the next state. I mean, previous state, because J and K value both are off, just like uh, SR. You can see that it's holding, it's, ca it's caring about the previous state in this case. And then there are three other possibilities, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Just like SR, again, when J is 0 and K is opposite to that, you're going to get 0. When J is 1 and K is opposite to that, you no notice it? It's going to give you 1. The difference comes in in SR, set and reset quick flop, one one state is not used. When both are one, you don't use it. But over here, you toggle it. That means toggle. Okay? Means Q, T, but opposite. Whatever the previous state was, you're going to get the opposite of that. Okay? So, again, this is, from here we can see we can drive our JK from SR diagram. All we need to do is we take Q and we connect it over here, okay? And we take Q naught and we click it over here and we call it D, right? You saw that we drop D, D and D, you can get this value, it becomes T, and we can drive JK from the same circuit. So these are the basic definitions of uh, four basic flip flops that are often used. Let's uh, do an example, try to understand it a little bit better. So I'm going to raise this. Let's draw, let's design a flip flop. Let's call it a P and positive negative flip flop. P and flip flop. Control the clock. So two inputs, and you get one output. Okay. And let's have a small table for defining it. So we got. I'm not going to care about clock because we know when the clock is off, we don't care about input. It holds the previous state. We got that. So I'm just going to put pn values, and I'm going to have a next state in here. Four possibilities. Since it's two bits, so let's change it a bit. Let's say when it goes zero zero, we get zero. When zero one, we get previous state. When it's one zero, we toggle the state. And when it's one one, we get one. Okay. So let's 
have this. Notice we got next to and we got input. Whenever we we have we want to uh, get equation for a flip flop or state diagram or what have you, we need three things. Minimum. So we need next state for sure. We need input for sure. But we also need our previous state. Okay. Without previous state, we won't be able to get proper results. So we're gonna have we're gonna draw a table with previous state. If a system that's given to you has an output, you're also gonna have an output. Okay. And we'll do example in the next video. Uh, more example in the next video. So let's expand this using previous state. You see that previous the next state is one bit. So you have one bit result. So our previous state previous state. It's going to be one bit as well, okay? So I'm just going to call it Q. And then you got input, which is two bit down here, P and N value. And you got next bit, which is our Q value again. So let's have this, okay? Since our previous state is one bit, for each state, so it's going to be either zero or one, for each zero, we're going to have four possibilities of pn, and for each one, we're going to have four possibilities of pn. So four zeros, assuming in all cases the previous state was zero, we have four possibilities, zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. And previous state, assuming that it's one, we have, again, four possibilities. Oh, uh, sorry, zero, one, one, zero, and one, one, okay? So, we can look at it and then we can expand it, right? First thing we notice that when it's 0, 0, or 1, 1, we don't care about previous state. So 0, 0, 1, 1, we don't care about previous state. So we can easily put what we have, either 0, either 1, either 0, or either 1, OK? But for the other four states, we do care about the previous state, where our previous state was, right? So 0, 1. 0, 1 means we hold our previous state. In this case, previous state is 0, so we're going to get 0. OK? 1, 0, when we look at it, it toggles it. So if our previous state is 0, it toggles it, so we get 1 over here. OK? So this is, again, uh, 0, 1, right here. Right? So it's, when it's 0, 1, when p is 0, and n is 1, we hold the previous state. In this case, it's 1, so we're going to put 1. And we toggle it. Since it's 1, we put 0 over here. So this gives us our uh, table, proper table, with all everything we need. So we can get the equation for this p n flip flop. Okay? So get the equation. Since we only have next state, no output, and it's 1 bit, so we just need 1 k map for this part. And we know that we are representing that k-map using 3-bit input. So let's do that over here. So q, p, plus 1. Our next state k-map is represented by 3 bits. Our q, our p, and value. OK? So 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And wherever we have 1, again, we're going to put it in k-map. OK? So it's 1, 1, 1, 1. Let's start from the bottom. 1, 0, 1, here. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, here. And 0, 0, 0. Sorry, 0, 1, 0, down here, OK? All right. So we can, we can see that we are making two groups down here, OK? So two groups include, uh, for Q, T, for our next state, for Pn, we got the equation. So by grouping this, we know it's going to be Q. And we're taking out, since uh, our p value is changing, we're taking out p. So it's going to be Qn. And plus, or, I mean, Q0. And by changing, grouping this, we're taking out our n value. So it's going to be p. And that gives us our equation for p and flip flop. Okay. Looking over here, since we know our previous state is one bit, there are only going to be two states. It's going to be, I'm going to erase this, actually. 
So it's going to be either 0 or it's going to be 1, right? And each state has four possibilities. You can see that from here as well, right? So 0, when our pn value is 0, 0, we stay, when at state 0, when our input is 0, 0, we stay at 0, OK? So when it's 0, 0, we stay at 0. When it's 0, at state 0, when our input is 0, 1, we still stay at 0. OK? When at state 0, our input is 1, 0, we move on to next state. And same goes for 1, 1. So I'm going to put 1, 1 on a building as well. Now, four possibilities of state 0 are done. Let's look at our next state, assuming that our previous state was 1. When we, our input is 0, 0, we go back to state 0. When our input is 0, 1, we stay at state number 1. When it's 1, 0, we go back to 0, 0. When it's 1, 1, we uh, stay at state 1. Okay? So that's a state diagram using that table. Okay. I'm going to erase this too. By the way, so if this, getting this table right is very, very important. If we have this right, we can get anything we want to from here. Okay? Now that we have the equation, we have the state diagram, I'm going to erase this. And let's assume we want to get a D flip-flop using our PN flip-flop that we drew. Okay? So we want to get a D flip-flop using this. So D flip-flop, that's the definition of D flip-flop. 0, 0, 0, 1. We get our next state becomes the same. OK? So in D flip-flop, we don't care about the previous state, like I mentioned earlier. Right? So when I look at the table of P and flip-flop, we notice that 0, 1, and 1, 0 cares about previous state, and we don't want that. Okay? So we want to take this out. That's number one thing. Since our next state only has 0 or 1 value, these two have 0 or 1 value. Then we look at what our inputs are. If they have to be 0, 0. Actually, I'm going to use the arrow. 0, 0, or 1, 1. Okay? So both our values of P and N, using clock, are same for it to work. Like a D flip clock, all we have to do is we need to combine this and we can call it D flip clock. See, once you compare the table, it becomes so easy. Let's do the vice versa. Let's say if we have D flip clock, for example. Okay? We have D flip clock and we want to get P and flip clock from D flip clock. In this case, we're going to use equation that we found. Okay? So we have a D flip clock using clock. And we want to get our uh, P and flip flop, okay? So let's say we have two inputs, P and N, okay? First input, we take our previous state, which is Q, this one. And I'm going to come down from outside, and we have N, and we add it. So I'm going to add it. And then the other one is, I have Q naught times with P. So I'm going to naught it, and I'm going to time it with P, and it, and they both are ORing, so I'm going to have an OR gate and put it in as a D. Okay? There. We got our P and flip flop using D flip flop. Again, once we have equation, once we had the table right, it's, it becomes really, really easy from, to go from one way to the other. Okay? So I'm going to conclude uh, my part one for flip flop with this. Uh, hopefully, this helped you guys. Uh, Please let me know uh, what you think, and uh, if you like it, please subscribe. Have a good day. Thank you.